Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching. In today's video, I have attempted to make the Niffler from the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them movie, so let's get right into it. I'm starting out with an 8 inch half ball pan that I've cut in half, and I'm going to be filling that with some Swiss meringue buttercream. I had some leftover pink, which is why I'm using pink. I'm using my small offset spatula to apply a thin layer of buttercream all around the outside of my cake for a crumb coat, and I'm going to pop that in the fridge for about 25 minutes to firm up. When you can touch the buttercream with your finger and none of it comes off and it's ready for the final ice, so I'm applying a thick layer of buttercream around my whole cake and then I'm just going to use my spatula to get it as smooth as possible. There's going to be lots of texture on top of the cake so I'm not really worried about it being too smooth, just do the best you can. I place my cake back in the fridge to chill and then I'm going to start on my fondant. I'm taking the extra step of covering my cake in some white fondant. Even though it's going to be covered in coins, I do want to have a bit of a barrier between the buttercream and the coins because I don't want any of that buttercream to peek through. So I've rolled my fondant out onto my cornstarch surface and then I'm going to pick that up with my fondant roller and drape that over my cake and just smooth it down with my hands. Once I reach the bottom, I'm just going to cut away the excess with my pizza cutter. To make my coins, I'm rolling out some white fondant fairly thin, and then using my cutter, I am just punching out a bunch of circles. This took me quite a long time, but it's better to have a couple more than you think versus not enough. When I had cut them all out, I picked them up and smoothed down any rough edges with my fingers, and then I placed those onto a sheet of parchment paper, and using my Rokum Super Gold Luster Dust mixed with a little bit of food grade alcohol, I brushed that over each coin. While those are drying, I'm going to start on my Niffler. And for the body, I have some marshmallows that I mix with a little bit of water. And I'm going to be melting those in the microwave for 30 second intervals until it's completely smooth. And I just eyeballed the amount. So you can look up an actual Rice Krispie recipe if you want. I just winged this and I added enough Rice Krispies that when I mixed it together, I had a nice sticky mess. I waited about 10 minutes before I tried to handle them and I brushed my surface as well as my hands with some shortening and then formed my Rice Krispies into kind of a teardrop shape. I used my fingers to create some indents just to give his body a little more shape and then once I was happy with it, I placed it on a piece of parchment paper and I grabbed some buttercream and applied a thin layer all around and then I popped that into the fridge just like you do with a normal crumb coat. I applied one more layer of buttercream, I let that chill and then using my hands, I went over the entire body just smoothing down any ridges. It doesn't have to be completely smooth because he's going to have some fur textured into the fondant so it doesn't have to be perfect but you don't want it to be super lumpy. I rolled out some black fondant and then just draped that over my Rice Krispie body, smoothed it down with my hands, and at the bottom, where I was cutting away the excess with my X-Acto knife, I just left a little bit of a lip so I could tuck that underneath. You could use a fondant tool for this next step, but I figured everybody would have a toothpick or a cocktail stick, whatever you call it. And I just went over the entire thing and just made little indents to look like fur. So I had something that looked like this. For the head, I'm gonna start with his mouth, beaky area. He looks kind of like a platypus, so I'm going to go for that kind of shape. Just look at a picture if it helps you. I have some white fondant that I've dyed with a little bit of ivory food coloring. 
I'm rolling that out into a sausage type shape that's tapered at one end and then using my fingers I'm going to press down on either side of the fatter end of the teardrop shape and I want to keep the middle part raised a bit. So this is hard to kind of explain but you can see the general shape of what I got going on. It's tapered at the one end and I've also flattened that down just a bit so the tip of his mouth isn't so thick. And then using my X-Acto knife, I'm going to blunt off the fatter end so that it fits better to the head. I've rolled out a ball of fondant just so I could press my mouthpiece against something round just to help me shape it better. And I know, again, it's hard to kind of explain what I'm doing here, but I ended up with this shape. So hopefully the visual is enough. At the very tip of his mouth, I'm just using my finger to kind of at the same time press each corner down while pressing the middle section up just so it curves a bit. Then using my X-Acto knife I'm going to trace out the line of his mouth and it pretty much goes from side to side all the way around. So I'm marking that in lightly at first and then going over that with a cocktail stick to deepen it. and then using my fondant tool, I'm marking in two nostrils. I've rolled out a ball of black fondant until there was no seams, and I'm going to be shaping that so there is a slight little cone at the very top, because the Nithra's head isn't perfectly round, it kind of tapers in. I attach that to the body using a skewer, and then again with my cocktail stick, I'm just marking in the same fur pattern. To attach the mouthpiece, I'm using a cocktail stick and I'm just slowly inserting that in. I also brushed a little bit of water just to give it a little extra adhesive. For the eyes, I have more of my ivory fondant and I've rolled out two balls and placed that on either side. And then using my balling tool, I just pressed in two indents for the eyeballs. I pressed in two balls of brown fondant and then using more of my ivory fondant I'm rolling out these little pieces and then attaching them as eyelids. Using my cocktail stick, I'm marking in lines on either side of the very top of his mouthy beaky part. And then I'm also adding lines into my eyelids because he does seem to have a lot of texture there and it's also going to help blend out any seams you may have. I grabbed some brown food coloring with my paintbrush and just painted over my eyes and then added two small balls of black fondant for the pupils. I then painted over the entire eye all over again just to make it look a little glossy. To make the mouthpiece look a little more blended into the head, I added a couple pieces of black fondant around the very top and the eyes and then just blended those in with my cocktail stick. Moving on to the arms and the legs and you can see that I have attached two here. I'm just rolling out some more of my black fondant into these sausage type shapes and then pressing them on and blending them in to the body with my cocktail stick. For the hands and feet, unfortunately my camera didn't film when I was actually shaping them, 
So all I did was took more of my ivory fondant and I rolled out a fat teardrop and then I smushed that against my counter and using my X-Acto knife I cut out four fingers. I separated those a bit with my own fingers and I just blunted the ends and just till they were rounded off a bit so they weren't so sharp looking. So that's where we are here. I'm using my X-Acto knife to mark in some lines all over the fingers and then using the end of my pointed fondant tool I'm just adding little divots into the very end of the fingers where the nails are gonna go later. I attached the feet to the body using just a little bit of water and I curled the toes forward ever so slightly and I attached one of the hands using water and the other one with a cocktail stick so it would kind of hold away from the body a bit. For the hands, I added some black fondant around the wrist area and I blended those in using a cocktail stick. For the nails, I rolled out these teeny tiny little black teardrop shapes and then just added those in using some water. body is mostly done I have some black and some brown color dust and I'm just going to brush that all over the ivory parts of his body just a little darker around where his eyes and the beginning of his mouth is and then over the hands and the feet I don't want them to be like really dark but concentrate the colors where you think there would be shadows I also added two little balls of white fondant into each eye for the catch lights, but I ended up taking those off later. I don't know how I felt about them. I thought they made them look a little bit weird, so you could take or leave this next step. Now that the Niffler is done, I'm going to move on to the jewels for the cake. So I have this mold here by Wilton. I will link the one that I used below, and I'm going to be pressing some fondant into each of those cavities, and then just trimming away the excess popping them into the fridge for about 15 minutes and they should come just right out of the mold. They shouldn't really fight you. If you do find you have a harder time, you can just lightly spray the whole thing with some vegetable oil. I wanted some of the jewels to be shinier and not made from fondant. So you could do isomalt or you could make your own sugar base. I'm just using some Jolly Rancher candies that I'm melting in the microwave for 10 second intervals. This is hot, so if you are younger, then you need to have a parent help you with this. Um, you don't want them to burn, just like any sugar, it can burn really easily. So I stirred mine a little until they were completely melted, and then I just poured them into the cavity. They dry pretty fast, so you want to move quickly, and if you find like me, like it kind of gets sticky and messy, you can just use a knife that is like lightly rubbed with some shortening, and that'll help you just to guide it into the mold and also get off any of the excess around the edges. They should pop out of the mold just like the fondant really easy once they're set. I did some blue and some red in different shapes. These certainly aren't like the best looking sugar gems. If you use isomalt, you probably have a better result, but these are really easy and everyone can do this. For my white fondant pieces, I'm dusting them with a little bit of pearl luster dust. I brushed each of my pieces with some shortening to help my luster dust get a nice even coat. And then I also have a little bit of disco dust that I'm brushing onto another little brochy looking thing. Now that everything is ready to attach, I have put the Niffler on top of my cake and I'm just placing my coins everywhere on there. I'm using some shortening to attach them. You could also just use water or piping gel. I'm placing those all over and then layering them up and putting them in places to make sure that there's no gaps or minimal gaps. You can always put your jewels over any gaps if you really can't make the coins fit. I stacked a couple on the edge, just put them everywhere so it's like organized chaos. So the last step was adding the pearls and the gems. And 
and this was the final result guys you can see in some of the pictures that I did end up taking out the catch lights I didn't really know which way I liked it better I'm still arguing with myself over it but I hope you liked this video if you're wanting more from the Harry Potter universe I will link the Harry Potter cake that I did below I absolutely loved the Niffler he was my favorite part from the movie his greedy little ways touched my soul so I was so happy to make this Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.